Uh, Josh Green here for Seconds Out. Delighted today to be joined by Louis Edmondson, uh, back on UK Shores. How are you doing today, Louis? I'm good, thank you, Josh. I'm all good, mate. Um, how are you, how's yourself? You good? Yeah, really, really well, mate. Um, I've seen on social media you've been training hard. Uh, you were saying to me off camera yeah. there, away for four weeks or so, out and training, yeah. working hard, looking yeah. for that next fight. Yeah, that's it, mate. That's it. Um, I don't know what you've seen online, but there's been a little bit of uh, bit of ups and downs and some promises and some contracts and all sorts of stuff that's going on. But um, yeah, I've been training hard. Um, I haven't took my foot off the gas and uh, just waiting for the next step, the next move um, to see what that is, really. We'll get into some of that in a second, but just talk to yeah. you about your time out there and focusing on yourself and making sure you're ready and in a position when the call comes. That's it. I mean, um, I was out in Future Ventura at Bailey's gym. Future Ventura was there for two weeks. Um, I went out there with my little cousin um, before anything was spoke about. I'm oh, sorry, before the contract was signed just before we went there. So we went out there, um, got a little bit of weight off, come home, and then flew out to Marbella for some um, tailored sparring. Um, me and my coach, we flew out there for two weeks. Um, so yeah, it was brilliant. Um, good to be away, good training in the heat, um, making sure I'm the best version of myself. But um, yeah, it's good, but I'm happy to be back now and yeah, that's where we're at. Let's talk about the future yourself and sort of the plans and what we've seen over the last few weeks. We know that Ben Whitaker fight, fight from where we were looking was, was close, maybe and even closer from where you're standing, just from your understanding how how close or was that fight signed? From well, from my understanding, um, obviously Ben Shalom was calling uh, my team, trying to make the fight yet again. Um, I mean, this has been going on now for probably eighteen months. It's ridiculous, to be honest. I don't know. I don't know what sort of games they're playing. Um, but yeah, again, we accepted it. Um, the contract got sent over to fight him in October the 12th in Saudi Arabia. It was signed and sent back within rounds, money. Everything was agreed within about 10 minutes from our end. And we sent the contract straight back. So as far as we were concerned, the fight was on. Um, took ourselves away. Um, obviously invested heavy into the camp. Mm. Um, was away, obviously away. Was away sparring Willie Atkinson. Um, and as I said, yeah, away for four weeks. So the, as far as I was concerned, the fight was on. The fight was happening. Um, a lot of other fighters in the division, um, when I speak to them about it, they they always saying, nah, he's not going to fight you. The fight's too risky. He's not going to fight you. And I'm saying, boys, it's signed. The fight is signed. It's on. It's happening. Like, you just can... It's happening. Do you know what I mean? But I stand him right. And... um. Yeah, obviously they were right. Obviously they was right the whole time. Obviously as sad as it is, was getting messed around yet again. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what the plan is. But I actually speak to Ben with his dad quite a lot. Um, he's a nice man. He's a good man. And he told me, Lou, I want my son to fight you. I want my son to silence you. But he's his own man and I can't force him to fight you. So whatever that means, I don't know. Um, I feel like Ben Whitaker's got a little bit of a bad vibe about me, a bad feeling about me. And I feel like he's not ready to take the risk. Um, mm. They say that they're looking upwards and not down, but fighting Liam Cameron, no disrespect to a man that's been beat many times. Um, yeah, and below me in the rankings, I don't really know what they're getting at by that. But again, it makes more sense for him, I suppose. But I just think it's naughty that they're sending out multiple contracts, getting contracts signed and getting them sent back, knowing full well that it's not going to happen. So I don't really know what's going on that end. When it comes down to it, what do you think the the reasoning is why we weren't able to get that solid confirmed for that day? Like, like Ben Whitaker's dad, um, like Tony told me, he wants his son to fight me, but he can't force him. So I believe that they know, they know it's a proper fight, they know it's a hard fight, and I feel like they're taking their the easy options that makes more sense for him right now. But I don't know why they're harassing our phone with multiple calls. Like, 
getting us to sign contracts, making multiple phone calls for it not to happen. I'm sick to death of it, to be honest with you. I'm sick to death of it. And it's like, it's just stupidness. Like Ben Shalom's always says, oh, he likes me and this and that. He wants to see me do well and this and that. He's put me on a few shows, but he hasn't done me no favours. So it's just loads of messing about. And to be honest, I'm sick to death of it. That's fair enough, mate. Um, Liam Cameron versus Ben Whitaker is the fight out in Saudi, as you, yeah. you mentioned there. Do you think he will be able to pose any problems to Ben? No, I don't know. I think he's too small and I think his feet's too slow. Um, yeah, I just, it's crazy. It's a, it's a mad feeling, really, because I wasn't aware. I was away, obviously, my bar bear, getting ready for my first bar in the morning. And I woke up, I think, gone to the toilet and I've looked at, on the phone I had like 40 odd messages and I seen the post that it wasn't me fighting and that's the first time that I was aware of it you know and it's just I think it's naughty that we wasn't nobody told us nobody made us aware um, nobody told my team so yeah I think I don't think it's good business I don't think it was um, I don't think it's fair but life's not fair sometimes so it is what it is and I've seen why you've been out there. You mentioned his name earlier, Willie Hutchinson. You've been having some sparring yeah. with him. That must be yeah. great for yourself to get in with somebody yeah. who's, who's really raised his game over the last yeah. months. Yeah, 100%. Willie's a great fighter. And um, yeah, it was very, very good to get out there and get some work in um, to make me the best version of myself. And so, yeah, it was very, very good. Very, very good. I rate Willie very, very highly as a fighter. How's he looking in camp as he prepares for, for Joshua Boatsy? Very, 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 very good. Um, I'm looking forward to that fight, even more so now that I've um, been in the camp and been sharing the ring a lot lately. Um, I believe that Willie will get the job done in very, very good fashion. I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. and I think he's going to make a big, big statement in this fight. From what you've seen of him, in that camp, we we saw the improvements in his last fight yeah. over in Saudi against yeah. Craig Richards. He must give you the sort of thought and sort of impetus that look, he's come from a position where he's been on the York Hall cool shows. He's now fighting in yeah. Saudi, and the next step yeah. for him is Wembley. That that must yeah. be the route that you think you can follow. Hundred percent, and um, we want these big nights and we want these big fights and. Everybody knows that we've been pursuing the big fight for Ben and we've accepted it probably eight or nine times now. Um, over 13, 14 months ago, we were training, accepting dates, accepting short term dates on three weeks' notice. We've accepted this fight now silly amounts of times, and this is what we're here for. We want the proper fights, we want the big nights, and we want to show how good that we are. But at the minute, something don't just seem to be quite given, you know. Um, but listen, my time will come. Um, we're just concentrating on making me the best version of myself. We're improving. We're working the gym. And when the opportunities come, they'll come. I mean, we've been promised that we're still on the Saudi card. Yeah. I'm not too sure. I don't really believe no promises in boxing no more. Um, this game's all over the place. And uh, well, it has been from my side of things. And So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I'll be ready for whatever comes. And we'll see what the next step is. Forgetting Ben Whitaker, what are the other options that you would like in the opposite corner to yourself? Ezra Taylor is another good fight. I think that fight makes sense. Um, yeah, whoever, 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 whoever's you say. What well, I think I'm, I think I'm like number fourteen or thirteen in Britain or something like right now. I think that the first top six or seven, I suppose, I'll push him right on, and then anybody in that next. That next space, really. We just want um, we just want meaningful fights, we want good domestic British fights, and we want to be in big nights and so we're capable of. You obviously work really closely um, with Billy Joe Saunders. I was just wondering what yeah. sort of influence that he's been able to have on you throughout your career so far, and what advice he's been able to give you moving forwards. I mean, yeah, since I've met Billy Joe, he's um, he's brought me on no end. Physically, mentally, um, obviously I was around him for a lot for the Canelo camp. I've done that with him. I used to live up on his land with him. Mm-hmm. It's um, yeah, he's um, he's brought me on physically, mentally, and I can't thank him enough for everything that he's done for me. 
um, be alongside Tom Watts, um, three six five boxing management. They've um, they non they always do what's best for me, you know, and um, that's all you can ask of people. So yeah, they're they're brilliant. I can't thank them enough for everything that they do for me. And Billy Joe spoke quite openly the last couple of weeks about really wanting a return to the ring himself. Yeah. You obviously know him pretty well and you'll see him yeah. really regularly, I'm sure. You think he's he's yeah. ready for that? And what do you think he can do when he returns? I think that's all depends on Billy Joe, really, and that's a question that he has to he has to ask. Um I believe he'll um fight again definitely. And I feel like he can be world champion again one hundred percent. It's just um it's all down to him and what he wants to do, you know. He talked on Talksport yesterday about a fight between himself and Chris Eubank Jr. Um, yeah. That would obviously be an absolutely huge fight for the UK audience and the world audience as well. How would you see a fight like that and a fight week like that playing out? I actually went to that fight as a boxing fan yeah. um, before before I knew Billy Joe and before we obviously come close or whatever. He was my favourite fighter growing up. So it's crazy how things work out sometimes. But um yeah, actually went to that first fight. I think it yeah, I think I remember the day after my birthday, I think. But um yeah, I'm, there's no way in a million years for Shubank will never beat Billy Joe. Never. There's too much talent there and there's no way he'll ever beat him. But I'd love to see that fight again. Um yeah, hopefully it happens. I'm pretty sure it will. We've certainly got our fingers crossed for that one. Um final bit of business is the main event uh, in late late October between Dimitri Bovol and Arta Betabiev. Um good, good fight. Unbelievable fight. October the 12th it is, isn't it? October the 12th, yeah, that's the date. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think Bibble on point. Yeah? I mean, what do you think, think each fighter has to do to gain an advantage of that? One? Because it, it, it's so hard to split them. I, I, I think Bibble, um, through, a little, through volume, Volume um, will win on points, but we'll see. We'll see. You can't put it past any of them. There's a case. There's a case you can argue for both fighters. So let's see. Let's see what works out. Yeah, Arthur better be obviously. I think 39 years of age now. He's certainly nearing that 40 mark. We know that he's had a bit of injury problems as well. That's Do you think it. that could play into it at all? I think it can, but at that sort of level, you guys hard to call the winner. But I, I believe. Bivol will win on points. Um, obviously, there's a case for the Turvey of putting a lot of pressure on and maybe tiring him out a little bit. But Bivol's engine is unbelievable, so I'm going Bivol points. We'll see. Let's see. Hopefully, I'm on the same on the card as well, like we've been promised. But again, promises in boxing. What does it mean? <laughs> well, appreciate the time today, Louis. Sure. Uh, speaking so openly, and uh, yeah, we'll catch up soon, mate. Nice. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, mate. Cheers.